Nick's Fishing Shack. Nick's Fishing Shack. A lot of memories here. Good memories. Anna said he'd been sneaking off here to work on something. I almost hope I don't find anything. Nick, what were you up to? Joan's bike. Extensively used, but well maintained. Joan rides this bike everywhere. Which is impressive with how far away everything is out here. What's it doing here? Maybe she's here. That'd be my first bet. Campfire. Used to make Joan's first s'more. She didn't finish it. I remember teaching Bug how to roast marshmallows. Hers turned out great. Mine were always burnt. But she didn't finish it. Broken rod. Oh, it's a, a mine palace. Sure. You know, fishing's a lot like life. Practice, patience, and perseverance hooks you the big one. Dad, not everything is a life lesson. <laughs> Actually, I was talking to Muley here. Oh, that's fine. He's got a lot to learn. <laughs> you know, I'm better at fishing and life than you are. <laughs> Whatever you say, Muley. Oh, worms are so cute. You sure are, bud. Can you hook me another one? Can't catch a fish without bait. Um, I, I uh, I don't want to hurt it. Come on, it's just a worm. Here, a bug. Just hand them over and I'll bait it. No! I'd be an accomplice then! Don't worry about it. The point of fishing isn't to catch anything anyways. Aww. Wait, who's that? Who was watching us? Achievement? Cherish your memories. Relive all your memories. Really? That was all of them? I must be coming close to the end then. Well, alright. Bug? Muley? How did you... Does my mom know? Does your mom know what? What is this? Mom doesn't know. Good. I've decided to leave town. No. Bug, that's... This is not a good idea. I've got food for five days. I'll hitchhike and bike down to Virginia. Do you have any idea how far that is? About 80 miles to get down to my Aunt Lisa. My mom hates her. Don't try to stop me. You can't leave like this. Not without telling anyone. <laughs> oh, yeah? Why not? That's what you did. She's serious about this. Careful, Sam. This is not a drill. Maybe try to bring up her mother again. Is it? Oh. Is everything okay at home? Is there something wrong with your mom? No, I'm running away because things are so great. <laughs> Plus, I know what she'll say. Calm down, think of the common good. She doesn't do anything, just sits around, takes her back pain pills, and stares at the TV like a lump. Well, that was a miss. When it comes to this kid, your instinct is better than mine. The mother, though, we should have a talk with her later. We will. Look, I'm not a child anymore. I'm not asking for your permission. There's nothing for me here. You should open up to your mom. You should talk to your mom about this. She's the only family you have left. <laughs> You're just not listening. Both of you always telling me what to think. Both of you trapped in your own heads. I'm done relying on others. My dad I could rely on. 
that he's gone. There's nothing else for me around here. I was wrong yesterday. She's not in denial. She's scared. Yeah? Something terrible happened to him, but no one listens to me. No one cares. Everyone cares. Uh, I mourn him too. He was my best friend. Trust me, I care. I, I just want to know what happened. What really happened. Me too, Bug. You just gotta trust that I'm really looking into this. Okay? I know you're doing your best. It's just this town, you know? It just feels like it grinds you down. It's choking me, and I need fresh air. I need some place I can think. Not here. Sounds like Basswood really failed this kid. I mean, what am I supposed to do tomorrow? Or the day after? In ten years? You could be a journalist. We've talked about this. Something with insects? You could be a journalist. You ever consider journalism? You have a mind for investigation. Um, isn't it kind of dying? No. Yeah, that's oh. what makes it beautiful. I lied. Fighting to bring people truth in a world that doesn't care about it. <laughs> kind of sounds like you really want to be a journalist. Look, I don't know if you're trying to make me stay, or make me into you, or my father. You're just telling me what I want to hear. Or what you think I want to hear. I just want the truth. For once, from someone. I'm wasting my time here with you. Bug. Don't touch me! I'm sick of you. I'm sick of this town. And so, I'm going. And you can't stop me. Sam, we have to do something. Now I agree. We can't she let her go. Wants honesty. She doesn't care about bullshit. I can relate to that. I'll tell her what we found out about Nick's death. You can't do that. You're the adult. She's the child. Do you want her to start looking for the people who killed her father by herself? Do the responsible thing. Make her stay. It's for her own good. like the idea oh no i want to tell you the truth you need to know no you were right bug your father didn't die in that crash someone killed him and covered it up made it look like an accident now i don't know who did it yet or why that's why i came here that was maybe too much sam she's a kid i was right yes you were right. I need you to not tell anyone, though. I won't. I won't tell anyone. Not even my And mom. I need you to stay at home. I will. I'm gonna go home right now. Thank you, Sam. Get out of here. I don't know if that was a good idea. Me neither. But hey, it worked. Now that I've kept your daughter from skipping town. I did my best to talk Joan out of running away. Now back to Nick. What story was he working on? Better have a look around his fishing shack. Into the fishing shack? Search the shack. When I went to Nick's old fishing shack to investigate, I found Joan there packing her stuff to run away from home. The only way to talk her down was to tell her the truth about Nick's death. I don't know if I did the right thing. Nick's computer is the reason Anna's house was broken into, and my head was clonked. The attacker took off with Nick's files, so the question remains, what did Nick discover, and how did it get him killed? Let's see if you've kept anything hidden out here, Nick. A uh, fishing bag. He always kept his favorite rod in this special ready-to-go bag to protect it. Uh, Worm-eaten wood. Rotten just out of view. This is either new or Nick was really distracted. 
usually fixed everything. Comic book. Jones still loves Tardigrade Man? Tell a three-year-old kid about Tardigrade Man, and this is what happens. The Adventures of Tardigrade Man. Tardigrade Man wasn't what Joan wanted. She wanted the comic Captain Corset, the private princess who sails the deepest sea trenches. Except Nick was in a hurry when it was his turn to have Joan for the weekend, and he bought the wrong comic book. Comic fuel on Carter Road was out of Pirate Princesses. Joan was barely old enough to read, so Nick hoped it wouldn't matter. It did. She cried the entire day. Finally, it was you who read her The Adventures of Tardigrade Man. Compared to the swashbuckling witty princess, Tardigrade Man wasn't much to look at. It was old, bald, and had a scary purple face. Not an instant hit with Joan. But you, you saw... I mean, you who saw the appeal of Tardigrade Man from the word go... An unconventional hero from outer space. What's not to like? Think about it, you told Joan. Ice, fire, pressure, even poisonous radiation couldn't hurt him. When the, where the dinosaurs perished, Tardigrades triumphed. Suddenly, she wasn't crying anymore, but listening. Tardigrade man was half Tardigrade. Half human, half alien. That's not... Okay. And he had a plethora of survival skills. Plethora means many. Joan liked that word. I have a plethora of friends now, she said. Who are they, you asked. Someone at school? No, you, Muley, and Tardigreed Man. Another thing Tardigreeds can do is go dormant for 30 years, and then wake up and pick up right where they left off. Wouldn't it be great if friendships could do that too, Sam? That would be pretty great. I found all of her mementos. Anything on this side? No. What about down here? Uh, fish ruler, Nick's record catch is marked. No, this record is fraudulent. Nick stretched his fish to beat mine. I can sit here. Oh, it's one of these. They have a lot of these moments in, like, Life is Strange. Whoever killed Nick, I probably know him. Grew up with him. Even if you don't know them, they know you. Nick, Dennis, gone. A stone cold killer walks the streets of Basswood. Things like this can really make you feel isolated. Yep. Make you realize that at the end of the day, you're in this alone. Uh. Okay, let's leave. Jones stuff. Left her old toys behind. Bug never was the social type. Just like me. With Nick gone, I guess we both lost our best friend. Uh, Nick with hunter friends. We used to talk about how hunting was cruel. How much did you change, Nick? Empty spot. There used to be a calendar right here. Why'd he take it down? Drawing. <laughs> Joan always liked bugs. A graduation picture. Back when Nick and Kathy were college sweethearts. <laughs> Clearly Bug was there too. <clears throat> graduation photo. Kathy and Nick met and fell in love during the last semester at college in Connecticut. It was one of those midweek parties Nick used to drag you along to. That time, you went to get drinks, and when you returned, you found Nick talking to a girl in the corner. You didn't even look at her, just handed Nick his beer, and, then, and there was a second when you almost swept him away, back into the crowd, back to his life, away from a wedding and a baby and a job in Basswood. But Kathy had already grabbed his arm and smiled and talked at him. It was you who got swept away in the crowd. Still, in that second, there was everything Kathy was would always hold against you. Do you think it was jealousy, or was it bitterness that you didn't save her either from her future life? It was love at first sight. She told everyone she meant it, he did too. 
It wasn't anybody's fault that they were wrong. Would that be Nyx? Yeah. Uh, Joan has to stay. Desperate to convince Joan to go home, I told her the truth about her father's death. Uh, convinced Joan. I failed to talk Joan out of running away, so I had to make a tough choice. Reflection. I sat on the bench to clear my head. Oh, I actually did fail. Huh, I could have probably convinced her otherwise. Interesting. Growth chart. The evolution of Joad Wadron one notch at a time. Man, bugs certainly grew up faster than I realized. Uh, cleaned in the last few weeks. Nick came here recently. Uh... Okay. Oh. I have it open now. A hunting trophy? Not something Nick would have done back then. Fishing rod. This is where he kept the rods he'd loan out. So what's his favorite rod doing here? He always kept it separate. Locker? Has everything Nick wanted to keep away from Joan. <sighs> Locked. Nick always kept a spare key. It'd be somewhere out of Bug's reach. Nothing here. Probably too high and hard to get at anyway. No keys. It's also not the best place if you wanted him to stay hidden. Oh, is it the fish? Yeah, it's the fish. Clever little snake. What a fishy hiding spot, Nick. Always did love your cliches. Uh... Like many people, Nick kept a few guns. But never at home, and always locked up. Nick was trying to find ways to get Joan in college. It's gotten so expensive. Okay, first of all, drugs. A prescription for opioids with Kathy's name on it? What's this? These are pretty heavy-duty painkillers. Very addictive. Joan wasn't just acting up. Kathy has a problem. What's this? An article by Anna about a place called The Cove. Seems it's kind of a commune for outcasts just outside of Basswood. One Small Community Looks Out for Those That Fall Through the Cracks by Anna Miller. I'm interviewing Tyler, a man of few words in his mid-twenties and heavily tattooed, about the place he lives and why he's here. It's cold enough that I regret not bringing a second jacket. His hands, however, are not shaken because of the cold. This is his seventh relapse. On his seventh, second relapse, he lost his girlfriend. On the fourth, his family. The one after that, he attempted to rob his parents' home, but was instead beaten nearly to death by his, by his father. It's not like I wanted to hurt them. I just needed money, and I felt so bad that I thought I was dying. My parents' place was the only place I knew for sure that were, there was some crap I could sell. Dad caught me. I tried to talk to him, but he whooped my ass. Beat me with a lamp. I don't blame him. I didn't fight back. I was too ashamed. I needed a whooping. I still need a whooping. Lynette Brand, 52 with grained hair, looks on with compassionate eyes. Lynette is the one that owns the land and sets the rules. She's judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to deciding who stays and who goes. This place is called The Cove. When the local mine closed, a lot of people found themselves out of work, and some of them had no place to go. Drugs and crimes made them fall into patterns desperate people often fall into, and Lynette uh, found some of them camping out on her property. 
She let them stay as long as they follow two rules. No stealing and no fighting. Though she's had to kick a lot of people out over the years, it's not always permanent. In fact, she lit, uh, she just let one of them back in. He does not want to be named, but he has a lot in common with Tyler. A bad relationship with his family, a mother with her own drug abuse issues and a history of violent offenses. This young man explained to me why he came back. I can't make it out there. Everyone's hassling me and I'm just trying not to hassle myself. He has trouble staying still and looks ready to kill over at any moment. Yet he's also got a depth to him that's striking. Was sober for half a year once. Can't remember the first time I drank. Broke into Ma's liquor cabinet when I was five. Some people see this place and imagine the same old story of hillbillies in the mountains. Yet that isn't what this place is. This is a community. They're all drifters lost in the flow of life with nowhere else to go and a desire to be better. Lynette shakes her head as he fish finishes up. She'll let me stay, he says. I ask him how he knows. She'll, uh, she had come over and told me to get out, of, uh, get out right then, he answers. It's true. Lynette ha uh, lets him stay as long as he promises to try again. She has a lot of patience. You have to, she tells me, after the young man go goes to lie down. Everyone has their own way of dealing with pain. The path to mistakes costs a lot in forms, some of them pretty invincible. Unless you look for it, we all stumble sometimes. Most people take a few tries to get back up after being knocked down. If someone isn't there to help them, they'll just fall back over. The cove gives me hope. Has to be the same D he was talking to in his emails. D wants to meet. Looks like some kind of reminder Nick left for himself. A reminder of what? Remember, Caterpillar. All right. I think I went through everything here. Just making sure. Yep. to me. Remember Caterpillar. I don't know what this means. Yellow's top, blue's left, red's right, and green's down below? That's what I'm taking out of that. And what's the significance of this? I'm gonna skip it real fast. Unless Nick was this other man. Okay. So D wants to meet. Oh. <clears throat> Nick, what were you hiding in this bag that's so important you had it locked up? Interesting. Uh, oh, I guess I have to inspect the table. Yeah. I just gotta figure out the connection between Nick's note and this lock. Knowing Nick, maybe he left a hint lying around the shack. Oh, Caterpillar. I got you. That's clever. So it's right, down, left, 
right up. Okay. Right down, left, right up. Right down, left, right up. And it's right, down, left, right, up. That's it. Let's That's see clever. What we have here. That's very clever. Opioids. From D? Nick, were you looking into drug trafficking? That's a lot of cash. More than Nick could make in a decade. Don't give it to Chloe, she'll steal it. Nick was gathering at the cove, and that's how he found his informant, D. It's the person he met the night he died. I just need to figure out who it is. Twenty three Richard, early thirties, twitchy, uh, twitchy even when sober, high strung and obviously disliked by the code. Asked not to be named in Anna's article because of his father, who runs a shipping company. Smarter than he looks, or as dumb as he acts. Still hard to say. Both. One twenty seven. Still using? Yes. Who is the dealer? Tyler, Lynette, J Junior, Kyla, Dickie. Richard is Dickie. It's a nickname. Dickie sold drugs to Tyler. Find out who his supplier is. Uh, 123, Tyler Gilliam, mid-twenties. Sees himself as the Cope's protector, very defensive of Lynette. 127, Tyler's interview with Anna was heartbreaking. He was bad off, so bad in fact, that I was legitimately surprised to find him alive the next time I visited the Cove. He certainly wouldn't have been the first member of the group to be claimed by an OD in the middle of the night. Very aggressive. Been in and out of jail for most of his life, usually for assault. Don't antagonize. Clean since the interview. Where did he get his drugs? Dicky Keeps asking about Anna and to cooking. Uh, Junior interviewed by Anna but didn't make it into the article. Late 30s, not personable, X minor. 127, Junior has been living on the road, working wherever he can as a handyman. And when he came to Basewood, a minor, after the mine closed, he was arrested for a drug possession, staying at the cove now that he's out. He didn't have anywhere else to go. Keeps to himself, trying to get clean, but it's an ongoing process. From the mid Midwest, Michigan, took up smoking, trying to replace other habits with less bad ones. Hasn't worked. Junior, Justin Reynolds, collects hubcaps, has a Winchester in his truck, used, uh, used to live it in his truck, bowls his own cigarettes, taught me how, still uses occasionally, loves camo. I think... Richard. Richard is Dicky. It's a nickname. Dicky sold drugs to Tyler. Okay, so his informant has to be Richard right here. Richard, a.k.a. Dicky, a.k.a. D. Looks like I found who I was looking for. There we go. So that's what it was. Nick suspected a drug ring flourished here in Basswood after the mine closed. He had an informant, Dicky. Probably a low-level drug dealer, and he also had a lot of cash on hand. More than a reporter should. Dicky set up a meeting with Nick, and now Nick's dead. Dickie may be the only person who knows what really happened. Is he the one that did it? I need to find him. He lives at this place, the Cove. Or he did. Anna wrote that article on it. She has to know where it is. Best finally left. Did you find anything at the fish spot? Yes. Do you know where the Cove is? It's a little commune thing on the outskirts of town. Not big on outsiders. Let's go. I need you to take me there. Mm -hmm. 
let's go there. And we're off. 